Hello teachers, this is a video about how to grade an assignment uh, that is a OneDrive assignment. And I have to be a little careful about this because I'm trying to avoid showing student names. All right, so I have an assignment that I've made, actually a bunch of them, but this is the one I'm gonna show you today that was due on Sunday and some students, and luckily my IA, the inimitable Brian Roloff, has completed, and I'm gonna use that as the example. So uh, if you've assigned it as a OneDrive assignment, so you created a document uh, in and put it in your OneDrive and then assigned it up to here. Each of the students gets their own copy. And so to grade it, uh, you click into the assignment, you know, basically just click on it, the one you made, and you will get these uh, options here. This will take you directly to a blank version of the document. I usually click on this when I'm showing the students what they need to do before I send them off to do it. And then you have an in progress button, which will show you all the students who haven't yet submitted it. Uh, you can tell who opened the document, who uh, has opened, who hasn't opened the document, and very often you'll find a few in progress documents that are actually finished. And I usually grade those at the end. So if I click submissions here, what's going to happen? And I'm going to pause here for a second after I do this. Uh, I'm going to get the list of all the students who have completed and turned in the assignments intentionally. So I'm going to pause here and then I'm going to open that up. All right, when you do open up that, you'll get the list of all the student names on the left, which is now off screen, and you will get uh, open the first document, which is unfortunately what I couldn't show you. Uh, otherwise, I could show you how that clicked through. But basically, it just auto opens the first document, and you can scroll down to find the other documents. Uh, this is my IA, so uh, I made him do a fake uh, assignment version, and uh, this way I can now grade it. So what I have done here is basically, you know, I have pre-created a worksheet. And I always put my instructions at the top. I usually put the questions at the top so they read the questions before they read the reading. And then for me, almost invariably, the reading is at the bottom. Um, and the other thing I like to do just to keep it nice and simple is I put these parts in yellow or orange. Um, I always put my instructions in purple. And then I put the points possible in uh, yellow or orange. And as you can see, this doesn't quite make sense because there's something missing here. And I'm eventually going to type their actual grade in there so that they can see it. And then I also put how many points each assignment is worth, also in yellow. And again, you don't see how many points they have gotten. So here's the question. There's a little note about what that means. And here's the answer that Brian was so kind as to add as, a, uh, as an example. I told him to include some grammar problems and make some mistakes and things like that. But obviously, you know, I, these are answers to the questions that, you know, fit this. Uh, he didn't even answer number four. So... I'll show you how to actually edit this because right now I can't type into it. I can click all over it and copy stuff, but I can't actually grade it. And the key to this whole thing is this little open button. So when you click open, what happens is what you would imagine. It opens it. Um, and at this point, you can then edit the document. So what I tend to do, uh, click open, and then I just go through and you know read this and say I wanted to ding him for grammar, which I don't, but I will. Uh, then I just type in two of three points directly. Um, I could also say like, you know, whatever I felt like saying, watch your grammar. Um, and then I could, you know, do all the standard word stuff. I tend to put my good, my bad comments in red or my negative comments in red, my positive comments in green. Uh, however you feel like doing that's up to you. But basically I just make my comments right into the text because uh, I find they read that better. You can also, if you like, uh, do a comment that'll show up on the side. I tend to feel like they don't usually notice these. Some of them read them, some of them don't. But you could definitely type in long comments. If you have a canned set of comments, you could start just pasting those into that space. So anyway, uh, I basically just put the points in as I go along. Uh, you know, like say that was fine. Let's say this one was kind of incomplete. I would probably write a little note that said incomplete here in red so they knew why I was giving them uh, what they were giving them. This one they didn't even do, so I'm just going to give them, uh, oops, not nine, zero out of two. And then I would probably write, you know, no answer or just question mark, you know, uh, just so I knew that they, so they could see it. All right. And then at the end, I just kind of add up the points as I scroll. So in this case, you know, the kid got seven points, Brian. And then I just write 7 out of 11. All right. And weirdly, that's pretty much all you have to do. It auto saves. Um, and so when I close this thing, uh, it will just take me back to the other screen, which is actually still open uh, in a tab just to the left of this one. And again, I kind of have to have this awkward view so I don't show you any student names. So I'm going to pause here for a second. So now we're back to that uh, 
submission screen. So Brian's paper is highlighted on the name list on the left, and this is his paper that I graded. You will notice, however, that there is a problem, and that is that you can't actually see the comments or the grade that I, I gave. And the same thing will be true for the students when they look at their paper in uh, the like document list for when they turned it in. And the fix is actually really simple. Um, all they have to do is click the refresh button and uh, it will refresh um, as one might expect because Schoology is not actually live. So unless you click refresh, uh, the grades won't show up. But this way they can actually go through and see the comments you made in their paper. Uh, I have found that if you wait at least, if you grade like 24 hours before they open it, it tends to show up automatically. And I've also found that if you grade like right while they're working, um, it sometimes even with a refresh won't show up for a couple hours. So, uh, you know, the obvious thing is just to grade stuff and then don't tell the students it's graded until 24 hours later and then the refreshes will work or it'll automatically show up. But this way you can actually just grade straight into the assignment itself. The OneDrive assignments are, are pretty cool. It's not very complicated. Uh, and you know, you can use comments or just type straight into their documents. I do find that like, pre-putting in the points thing. Not only does that help the students know how important each question is, but it makes it way easier for you to grade. Um, so I just grade them along, put the, you know, have another window open with the uh, grade book in it, and I just grade them, put it in, grade them, put it in. Uh, and then the next day I tell the students, you know, now you can check out your comments. A lot of times they were not going to check out the comments unless they got low points. But, you know, obviously if they didn't get all the points, they're hopefully going to go and figure out like what it is they did wrong. Anyway, that's how to use OneDrive assignments and how to grade them in a nice, quick and easy way. Uh, and particularly the idea of making them refresh and knowing that it'll, they won't automatically see the comments if you grade uh, within a short window of time. Hope that was helpful. Thanks. Bye.